In today's video, we're going to be having a look at five new features in the recent 2023.7 update. Check it out. What's going on guys? I hope you're all doing well. Home Assistant's back with a nice rounded update, and this month we've got some brand new services, some brand new integrations, more UI changes, and also some big updates to an existing YAML deprecation policy, but more on that in just a second. First, let's kick this off with our first new feature, and this one is one of the big ones of the update, and it's the ability to get responses from service calls. Since the dawn of Home Assistant, Home Assistant service calls have only ever been one way, so you make a service call, for example you say turn on a light, and it will turn on the light, you don't get anything back. If you wanted to get and use any of the data from that service call, you'd need to employ the help of helpers or lots of other different workarounds that could store and hold any additional automation data that's been created by your service call. Well, today that all changes. 2023.7 marks the release of service call responses, and this means that when you make a call, you'll actually get feedback, or in this case, a response, and that response will actually provide you with some additional information based on whatever service call you do. At the time of recording this, there's currently only two services that support responses, but more are going to be added over time. The new services that support this are the calendar.list underscore events and the conversation.process. Frank showed off a really good example of responses by making use of the brand new calendar list event service call, and in his example, you can see how a calendar is being queried based on a time parameter and the response that's given from this service call gives all of the different events that are happening in that calendar based on whatever time you gave it. And you could take this even further by making use of the other new service call, which is the conversation process. So you can take your response from the calendars, pass that into another service call, and then you could do something like give it to ChatGPT and have that summarize all of that information and give you a nice quirky and funky output that you can use in text-to-speech. Even if it doesn't sound like it, this really is a significant change for service calls and it really does open up the possibilities to lots of new features and changes. So it's going to be really interesting to see what the community do with this and also really interesting to see what new service calls will gain from this and what existing service calls are going to be updated to support responses. The final thing that I want to quickly mention with service calls is a very small change to them as well and that small change allows the service call to specify whether it's mandatory for them to give a response or whether no response is required at all. My next feature for this update is some swanky new UI changes. In the previous update we had some really big changes to the integrations page and this totally changed the way that the page looked and felt and also how you interacted with it. For me personally I didn't like the changes right at the beginning but it slowly started to grow on me. It grew just enough for them to actually change it again with this release. So the integrations page has been changed again, but it's only a slight change. No, God, please, no, no, no. Based on lots of the community feedback, lots of people felt this page just looked very busy and a bit cluttered. So in this update, it's been slightly decluttered. So there's less going on and it still looks good. The same information is still available even with this subtle change, so you can still jump straight into the system options or you can jump straight into the devices. And if anything, with this new style, it's actually a little bit clearer because when you're hovering over the sections, it's clear that these are actually two different sections. Another change that's also come off the back of this small redesign is if you had any cards that had any issues or had attention required, then the cards would actually expand and move around a little bit. So you'd get a little page that might jitter a little bit, which was pretty annoying. Well, that's now been fixed. And another change that's also part of this is any new integration will now feature at the top of this integrations page. And it will be a lot larger and a lot more identifiable, letting you know that it's a brand new integration. Quickly, just running through some of the other UI changes, we've got a brand new lock dialog to match up with all of the other new dialogues that we've been receiving. And we've also got a new change for automations and scripts. So if the automations and scripts have an error or they're unavailable, they no longer disappear. They will actually appear in the list and show up as unavailable. And they'll also get a nice little red icon, which is just a nice visual thing for you to see. Moving on to the third new feature, and we've got the open assistant action. The Open Assistant action is a brand new dashboard action that allows you to instantly start talking to Assist. This is going to be really useful if you make use of things like wall panels or other smart home displays that support microphones and Assist. And what's really cool about this is this can actually be combined with another new feature, which is the sentence trigger. 
and this will essentially allow you to make use of some dictated voice and have that voice be used to trigger an automation or a script. Carrying on then with feature four, and we've got a much smaller feature, but it's one that I think is gonna make a lot of people happy, especially if you travel a lot or you manage other people's smart homes. And that feature is time zone management. Inside your user profile, you can now specify which time zone the Home Assistant interface should use. So you can specify whether it's the location of the device you're currently using, or you can specify whether it's the location that the Home Assistant server is sat in. And you might be sat there thinking, well, why is this one so useful? Well, the reason that this one is useful is because prior to this update, if you were managing somebody else's home that's in a different time zone to you, or you were traveling, if you look at things like the energy dashboard or anything else that uses time-based automation data, then it would actually all be wrong or all out of sync because you're in a different time zone. And if we're staying on the topic of time, it's now time for our final feature. And that feature is click and teleport. Drag and drop is still not quite ready for its prime time. So until then, we've got this new feature which aims to make it a bit easier to manage our cards through our, our masonry views. If you've done any kind of dashboard work and you've made use of the masonry view, then you'll know that it can be very cumbersome when you're placing cards. They either move to the wrong location or you're just sat there pressing up and down, trying to just rearrange cards and get it into the place that you want. And even when you do this, they still might not be in the exact position that you want. To aid with your dashboard design, you can now use click and teleport inside of the masonry view. And what this will do is it will add a little numeric value to the corner position of the card. And this will show you where the card is in relation to the actual grid that's used in the masonry view. So you know that position one will be the first card and so on and so forth. One nice feature about this is you can actually select the number and you can type in a value that you want the card to jump to. And then just like magic, the card will teleport to that position. Before we wrap this up, I also want to quickly mention a policy that's been reworked because the policy is to do with breaking changes. So prior to this update, with any break and change, we were given two months notice and two months works out to be two home assistant releases. So you get two months notice and then whatever the break and change was would take effect. Well, that's now been reworked to give people a bit more time. So the new policy states that it's gonna be six months. So you'll now have six home assistant releases to either fix or change something that's given you a break and change. And there we go, guys. That's been five new features in 2023.7. There were a ton of other new features and integrations in this update, and if you are interested in finding out more information about them, you'll find links to the full release notes as well as the Home Assistant release party, all in the description below. And while you're down there checking those out, if you did enjoy this video, don't forget to drop me a like, and if you're not already, hit that subscribe button and ding dong the notification bell, you'll then be alerted to any future video that I do. As always, a massive thank you to these awesome dudes. These awesome dudes are my Patreons and also my YouTube members, and if you are interested in helping support my channel, which in turn allows me to create content like this, then you'll find links to all of those places in the description below. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.